Thank you, and hi, and welcome to Pause Fest's 4.30 session. Can I just have a quick show of hands, women? Women, put your hands up. Give us a wave. Awesome. Okay. And men, look around. <laughs> Say hello to your brothers. Because I think, like normally I don't get many men in these sessions, and my theory on this is that men think that I'm going to do some kind of bra burning or knit from my vagina. <laughs> I'm just hoping we all remember that reference, because I reckon that's where the pussy hat came from. Uh, or... Um, guys, I, I just think that you feel like you're not going to be welcome here but I want to tell you, you really are welcome, because I'm not talking about feminist stuff today. I've got my economist hat on, and that's the one that I will be referencing when I talk about some of the fu fucking awesome facts about women. And another thing is the reason I swear and have said pussy and vagina in my opening is because... Oh, that sounded dodgy. Um, it's because... <laughs> <laughs> recover. Uh, it's because it seems that I get higher engagement from the guys when I use a bit of swearing expletive. So, you know, I did hone that skill in my advertising career. I learned pretty quickly if I had dirty jokes and swore a lot that the 97% of males that I worked with would let me into the in crowd. So, awesome facts about women. These are some businesses that really get it and that understand the audience that they are speaking to. So um, over here we've got Nike, who tried to talk to women 30 years ago, but they had a slight problem with their design and they were using a male's shoe and basically taking their male shoe print and menswear and shrinking and pinking it. So. They weren't really thinking about the female. And then they had this epiphany 10 years ago, what if we take a female athlete's body types, many different types, and also use a female's shoe print? And they've started killing it. So, you know, their comms is, are OK, but they've got their product right. So they're starting to tune in to what women want and need. Um, over here, the ANZ, great, for one of Australia's first brands that are actually saying, hey, women, we acknowledge you, we see you, we get you. So I hope they keep that up. Down on the left there, De Beers, a diamond company in the US. So they realised that, you know, thanks to sort of sex in the city and the um, independent and wealthy woman, that she didn't want to wait for the left-hand engagement ring and that she was actually interested in this says we, this says me. She had the money and she had the independence. And so after this campaign, 200% increase in sales. Um, over here, the carrots. Now, do you remember seeing these in Woolies? Slice, dice, cut carrots. So these ladies are the wives of the farmers in Queensland who sell carrots. And they used to have to chuck out the carrots that were ugly or misshapen or they couldn't sell, and they would sell that as stock feed for $50 a tonne. And then after these ladies going, let's just make the process of carrots being pre-prepared, let's make that easy, they're now selling them for 500 a tonne. So thinking through the female lens has helped make so much money for these farmers. And then there's the Like a Girl campaign, which has has everyone seen that one? Google it if you haven't. Um, those who have seen it have probably shared it with five friends. It was a turning point in uh, femvertising, which is advertising that takes females into account. So why are things the way they are? Well, since the beginning of business and history, we've seen through a male lens. Because when you think about it, when business was invented, it was the men who were in business and it was um, the women who were in the home. So we've just grown, all of us have received this history of seeing things through a male lens. Now when I was at school, 
I can't even remember any amazing females that we studied, apart from maybe Mother Teresa and Mary. All of the artists were men, the um, explorers, the prime ministers, the presidents, everyone that we learned about from a perspective of school and university were men. Do you agree with that? And so you Google marketing and the first 30 books that come up have been written by men. So it's no wonder that we're seeing this very male lens perspective. And where I first learned about this was something called the Hollywood gaze. And Hollywood gaze describes the fact that our cinematic history is really taken from the male gaze as well. Directors, producers, screenwriters, the people who've made Hollywood are men. And so there is an amazing speech called The Female Gaze. And if you Google that, there's a film director called Jill Soloway. I highly recommend that you look at this perspective. She unpacks the way we've all received the Hollywood gaze and what we would need to do to look at it from a female perspective. Now, I'm doing this in business because what we're seeing is a second-hand perspective of what women need. And women are a great big economic opportunity. So if anyone in here is in business, starting up, working for someone who thinks they could do better with their female audience, give us a show of hands. Yeah, does anyone think that they're already doing a great job? That they've really captured and harnessed their female market? Okay. So, I think that this is <coughs> amazing. It's like going to be gold rush when we realise how much women are worth, and by 2028, women are going to be responsible for 75% of discretionary spend. So women are really the ones who are going to be making our businesses more money if we learn how to have the right conversation with them. So let's run through some great facts and then I'm going to take us through some other, I'll take you through some data and then I'll take you through some other um, behavioural differences. So she's not the little homemaker. Although she is buying the majority of grocery, she is the Minister for Transport, for Education, for Sport, for Health, for Tourism. She's pretty much responsible for most things coming in and going out of her home. She is driving the majority of automotive or car purchases. And in second-hand cars, it's 85%, new it's 65%. So women are really behind the steering wheel. DIY, now I came to my marriage with a bigger toolbox than my husband and I'm not being clever or metaphors there. I just did. And I am the one who says, honey, we need to repair this, that or the other. He might go to Bunnings and buy the stuff, but it's always me saying, it's time to fix whatever we're doing. So um, a great ex analogy that I heard around that, this in the space is that a man goes to a hardware store, he buys the hammer, but a woman goes and she buys the picture wall for her lounge room that starts to describe the kind of different lens that we take when we're looking at male purchasing behaviour and female. Women over-index in pharmacy. So women are, uh, as we said in the introduction, they are worth, as an emerging economy, 28 trillion, which is more than China and India's emerging economies put together twice over. So this guy, he got it wrong, because this is what he should have been grabbing them by. Because <laughs> women are buying a lot of stuff. But I could go on and on with figures. 91% of women are dissatisfied with the way advertisers and marketers connect with them. 
um, they are driving all of these category decisions and yet we're not looking at that. Business is not seeing that gold rush and going after it and making the connection with women that is going to marry them to their brand. So let's look at the brains because that is one fundamental difference. If you go to the bathroom down here, thank you, might be a bit windy there. Um, if you go to the bathroom, you are going to choose which room to go in based on what? The genders, yep, the physical differences, skirt or trousers, and you will choose because we are different. Yet how many markets take this into account when they are creating a relationship? So let's say... Let's say... Um, Man and woman start out the same, and this is a fact. In utero, the fetus starts out as a female brain. At six weeks, the tiny testicles drop, and the male or the brain starts to marinate in testosterone. And this is the life for men. They become little boys who then, during infancy, have a testosterone surge, then again at puberty, and then again at 50, it drops off a bit. The female, she has a rush of hormones, oestrogen, progesterone, again at puberty, then again at pregnancy, at breastfeeding, perimenopause, at menopause. And a woman's chemical life is up and down. A male's is more, um, more steadfast throughout that journey. So there you go, there's some really different responses. Now, MRI imaging has been done of the brains between males and females, they've been read a piece of literature and their brains have lit up in different areas. There again, men and women behave differently to different stimulus and yet we keep being fed the same thing from business, male or female, and that's why we feel a disconnect. That's why you see the couple at a, on Saturday night at the movies, he wants to see the action thriller. She wants to see the romantic comedy now, that's for a reason. That's because different stimulus turns on different gender. So how do we use that? You have to write your question in the little thing, yeah? How do we use this information that we have about the inherent differences with men and women to um, actually leverage that when you're trying to do business with them? So this is quite a scientific chart about how men pick shampoo. Women, of course, are a little more complicated. <laughs> right? There we go again. These are the different things. Women have this scorecard in their head with businesses and brands. Did they treat me well? Are they looking after me? Oh, they didn't go down the... We've got... We're always checking it out. When is this business talking and creating a uh, conversation with me? When are they shutting me out? Now, supermarkets are the bane of my existence because the big guys in Australia have not featured a female in their ad. They've had women as props in their ad. When was the last time they had a female ambassador or actually nurtured and met the needs of their women? Women just smile when they say the prices are down. Like, they smile like this is the best news they've ever heard. I think that's a little bit shallow. So when Amazon come in, they're going to have a big challenge on their hand. And so this is what I say. I feel like a lot of the time, business is not connecting with this potential economic, amazingly, incredibly powerful financial woman, and this is what their customers end up feeling like, or their clients, or their, um, you know, the, the, the people that they're trying to interface with in their brand feel like, well, have we got anywhere else to go? These kind of brands seem to know what to do. Their fashion, their cosmetics, there's the Thermomix. It wasn't that a great invention. Let's do a $3,000 piece of technology for the kitchen. And the way we'll sell that is we'll get a bunch of women together, we'll give them a six-course meal and try and sign, the, sign them up at the end of it. 
great selling strategy. They're getting it. These brands who already know that their consumer is women seem to understand how to keep the relationship alive. And if you think of women start out as they're either rejecting your brand, they're icing you because you're not making any connection with them, or perhaps they have seen you, acknowledged you, because you've made an attempt to talk to them, or perhaps they're dating, flirting, Ultimately, where you want to be with women is you want them to be marrying your brand, because women want relationships, and they want to be seen and they want to be noticed, and that's what we need to pull. So take this example of the supermarket. They haven't really done much for us since 1937. Like it's the same old trolley. They're more focused on keeping competition out of our market. Amazon, when they come here. Are going to bring Amazon Fresh. Now they've developed a robot. You stick it in your kitchen, and you say, "Milk, milk, flour, whatever." You scan what you're missing or what you're about to put in the bin because you've used it, or you tell it like Siri, "I I need this." A week later, it turns up. It's just a constant refresh of where you are. Now in California, where they've been trialing this. Supermarkets in that area have suffered by 40% decrease in sales. That is looking and thinking through the female lens, which is how can we save time? How can we meet? How can we connect? How can we make life more efficient for that very busy woman? The baby category seem to have had no problem reinventing the pram. And they're saving time, and they've got ergonomic, and they've thought about the needs of the person that's probably going to be pushing this. So why haven't supermarkets? Why haven't other categories innovated in this way? So taking a look at this, where would you put your own business or your company's business? Obviously, you want to be top right. Which is seeing through this female lens and constantly innovating. Now I've plot a few、uh, categories where I think they are, and you see grocery down here, telco are down here. If they want to get this sort of transformative growth that categories that already speak to women are getting, you need to be looking through that female lens and constantly innovating. So, what is the female lens? What I do is work with businesses, and I conduct the business case to first establish what is the size of that market, how much are women worth, how much is your category worth, how is it split by gender. Now, it's a really smart thing to do to go, how much are women actually going to be worth? If we know that by 2028 they've got 75% of discretionary spend, how much are they worth to us in our category? And look at that value figure. Look at what's going to happen if you don't go after them, and if you don't grab your share of women. So here's four things that I recommend. And the first is to get the business case, to get the audit, to make sure you've got a team who understand and who have evolved enough to get the fact that women are a market that want to be connected to, and that are actually going to bring a lot of money. The second thing is about saving time for women. So they say that、um, mums get an average of 17 minutes me time a day, and that includes the two-minute toilet breaks that she's had five minutes, I mean five times that day. So there's not a lot of time. So anything you can do to save this woman time, even if it's that baby carriage that clips into the car and then clips into the pram. Anything that's going to help make her life that bit easier. So, I mentioned before that all business has a history, but what's her story? What is the female lens going to look like in that business, and how do you create that? How do you go from being a culture that has been only seen and imagined through the male lens to getting your Internal team on board and prepared to go after this female market. And finally, how do you get her to that stage of marriage? When Netta Porter put 
black boxes and ribbons around the gear that turns up at your house. That was a moment where they thought, let's make each delivery to her like a gift. What is it that your business is doing to connect to her? When Amazon Fresh said, let's put a little robot that makes life easier, she doesn't have to write it on a list. They're finding moments of truth in life that are going to help women fall in love with the brand. So, Female Lens is something that's going to change and transform business. If there's any questions that you want to ask that you don't want to ask in front of the group or that you haven't put in a, a, on the, what's it called? Slido. Slido. Uh, Mel, who is my extremely clever business manager, will take your details if you want to speak to me later. Um, otherwise, let's go for it now. Wonderful. Thank, oh, sorry. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Beck. That was really inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions from the floor? Hi. Um, I feel that um, advertising that is aimed at women is so off the mark. So I'm curious to know how we change that as well. I think women get women wrong as well. Could be, and that's what I say is that's why we need to see things through a female lens because the, the marketing and the, um, even the terminology and the strategic planning and the way we see business very often for women is the way that they have been taught and what they learned at university, and that's male lens. So if we're getting it wrong, that's what I'm saying is we've got to sort of take this shift, this very mindful shift to say, how do we research differently? How do we look at this opportunity differently? How do we make sure that the men and the women in our organisation are actually seeing this with the empathy through that female perspective? Yeah? We've got a follow-up question that's come in through Slido. How do you determine one lens to cater to both men and women to appeal to women but, with the, but without alienating men? Well, I don't think you should use one lens. I think you should use a lens for men and a lens for women so that you don't alienate either, but you do connect with them both. If you really can't afford that or you don't want to see through those bifocals, then uh, tests have shown that if you get it right with women, then you don't alienate men because women are a lot harder to please. Women are a more engaged consumer or customer and women are also harder critics. So I guess I hope that answers that for whoever has asked. Yep. Okay, we've got a couple of more questions here. I'll just come back to the back here. I'm going to go to the lady in Maroon first. Hi, uh, I just wanted to ask, do you need a third lens? So you just said about male and female, but what about non-binary and transgender people? Do you use the same female lens for them without alienating them or do you need a third? Great question. And I think what you need to do is make sure that that business case is there. You need to find out what percentage they represent of your market and make sure that you build that bridge to them as well. Yeah, and ANZ are a great example where they did the gay TMs and they have sponsored the Mardi Gras and they've not alienated their audience at all. They've actually said, we really see you and we acknowledge you. Yep. Hello. Hello. Um, I guess my question or comment is around, um, y yes, there needs to be a like female perspective and um, more f the female lens, but a lot of the things that you were talking about or brought up um, were very around like the gender norms as well. So how do you cater for women um, but without making people feel like they have to abide by those gender roles. So for like example, um, you know, women in STEM, like women aren't engaging in STEM because it's seen as like this male thing and it's not sexy to be, you know, um, in that field. And so p women feel alienated. So how do you have the female lens but also not alienate people through these gender norms? So sorry, the, you referenced STEM then. Can you just give me a bit, bit more detail about where you think the alienation might be taking place? Uh, well, it's shown that um, 
there, there were a lot more women programmers and it was uh, going up and then something happened in 1984 and part of that um, was that Nintendo actually started, there, with their advertising, they re really made gaming a male thing. Yes. And so even now, like, uh, I'm learning how to code and people are like, why are you learning how to code? You don't seem the nerd type. And yeah. it's just like these uh, gendered norms are sort of keeping us from, from you know, yeah. fulfilling what well, we're... I guess what I'm saying is that when you understand your market deeply, yeah. that's the sort of stuff you uncover and make sure that you're not going to alienate. You know, the deeper we know our audience, the more likely we are. And when we homogenise the audience, then we just broad brush and give sort of vanilla. Yeah? 